Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for our unit on forces today I'm going to talk about mass and weight. So today what we are going to do we will be able at the end of this lesson to define what is the weight of an object. We will be able to apply the relationship that links weight, mass and the acceleration of gravity and you'll see that this is a special case of Newton's second law with weight being a force, mass, okay, we met that already and not any acceleration but the acceleration of gravity and finally and most important uh, we should be able to tell the difference between mass and weight. We'll see how these two concepts are very often confused. And again, we're going to talk about Sir Isaac Newton. Um, together with stating the three laws of motion, uh, one of the greatest accomplishments of um, Isaac Newton was the discovery of the fact that gravity is something that not only affects us on Earth, but is also responsible to of the motion of the planet. And apparently he was inspired um, this discovery by an apple falling on his head. There's, uh, of course, a funny cartoon about that over here. So what um, Isaac Newton said, it was formulated, is what we call now the law of universal gravitation. Where universal means that it's valid everywhere. It's valid on Earth, on the Moon, everywhere in space. And it's a relationship about the force of gravity between two objects. Remember, force is always between two objects. And this is really, really important in the case of gravity. So here is the formulation of the law of universal gravitation. So here we have a force between the two objects. And remember, the force of gravity is a pulling force. And gravity is always attractive, always tries to pull things together. And the force is given by the product of the mass of the two objects. So you can imagine it as massive as the Earth and the Moon, you have a pretty strong force. This force depends on also on the distance uh, between the two planets, between the two objects. But since it goes with the square of a distance, basically it means that it becomes very, very weak very very fast because he, this is on the denominator and just to um, explain better the distance is not the distance between the surface of the objects but between what we call the center of mass which in the case of these two celestial objects more or less corresponds to their geometrical center and finally g is a constant is the constant of universal gravitation that means that this that the number that you have to put here is the same all over the universe. So what does this law mean to us? Now we know that weight, uh, which is a force, is the effect of this pull of gravity. Now, if in the previous formula you take into account the mass of the Earth, the distance that we have on average from the center of the Earth and the constant of universal gravitation, we will see that our weight depends on our mass measured in kilograms times a constant a constant that we have met already 9.8 actually you know that the number is a bit longer than this is 9.8 is the acceleration of gravity but is but comes directly from the formula we've seen before and of course now we we understand that this number will depend on where we are how far we are from the center of the earth or from whatever celestial object we're feeling uh, its gravity. So if it's the Sun or the Moon or Jupiter or everything else. So now we're ready to tackle um, the main question here. How we can tell mass and weight apart? Because as we also discussed in middle school, um, these two concepts are very, very often confused and more readily that happens during a normal conversation uh, when someone asks you how much do you weigh you know, and you think you can measure your weight by standing on a 
bathroom skill like the one picture here and then you might answer okay my weight is about 59 kilograms indeed you're giving the wrong, an wrong answer although this is exactly what your bathroom skill is measuring your mass because this number here is your mass measured in kilograms and at this point we're ready to tell what is the difference between these two physical quantities first of all mass now we met mass already so this is just a recap remember mass is the amount of matter in an object so mass depends only on the internal composition of an object the types of molecules the number of molecules the arrangement the relative arrangement of these molecules all these factors compound to make your mass your mass does not depend on where you are uh, your mass unless you start eating a lot or exercise a lot or going into a diet will not change will not depend if you're on earth in orbit in space or on the moon mass is measured normally with a balance like the triple balance here which is exactly like the one we use in class and the unit for mass is the kilogram or kg in shorthand on the other hand weight is a force we just said that no it's the force of gravity acting on an object is the gravitational pull on an object therefore it will depend on where you are the closer you are to an object the stronger the gravitational pull the more far away the weaker will be if you're close to a very massive planet your weight will be bigger if you're close to a very tiny moon your weight will be smaller so it depends on where you are it is a force therefore has a direction and like all forces weight will be measured with a newton meter a spring balance like those we already used in class like the one pictured here and like all forces the base unit of weight in an international system of units will be the newton to get a better idea of what are the similarities and difference between mass and weight because we saw before mass and weight are related to each other uh, we're going to use again our friend Eddie the elephant and we'll start by placing Eddie on earth now we know that the mass of Eddie M is 600 kilograms now uh, we will use the um, easy value G so we'll assume the acceleration of gravity is 10 so we can calculate the weight of Eddie we know we do mass 600 times 10 which gives us weight 6000 and the value is of course in newtons so this is the mass and the weight of Eddie on earth so what happens when Eddie goes to the moon so let's picture our elephant dressed in an appropriate spacesuit and walking on the surface of the moon there's a beautiful dark sky etc now as I told you before the mass of Eddie will not change it's still 600 kilograms of course not taking into account the spacesuit what will change will be Eddie's mass uh, weight sorry this because the gravity is less actually the acceleration of gravity on the surface of the moon is about six times smaller so um, you we just have to take the weight on earth and divide it by six so here's our result the weight of Eddie on the moon will be 1000 newtons but let's take it one step further let's imagine that at this point Eddie goes in deep space and when I mean deep space I don't mean in orbit around the earth if you're in orbit you're still feeling the gravity of the earth I'm, I'm talking of a place which is very very far from the earth very very far from other planets or other stars where gravity is almost zero gravity never goes completely to zero but let's imagine gravity is so small that it's negligible at this point we can readily say that the mass of Eddie is still 600 kilograms see the mass does not change what changes 
because it depends on location, depends on the gravitational pull, will be the weight. Because in deep space, there's no gravity, no acceleration of free fall, so the weight is just zero newtons. And in class, we will see how the fact that mass stays the same, but the weight changes can have very peculiar effect, especially if you go in space, if you go on the moon. But for today, that's all from me. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarino.